Hi everybody, welcome to the Dive Brief. Rescue Diver, or whatever your training agency calls it, is where many divers kind of aim as their like top certification, which is great. Uh, we need more rescue divers out there because rescue divers are taught to look after other scuba divers, not just themselves when things go wrong. Sure, we teach you the foundations of what you should do should something go wrong in more sort of foundational courses, but rescue teaches you what to do should something really bad go down. Not smiles and calmly asking for your octo before swimming casually back to the surface, but when things really tend to go bad in a bit more realistic way. But here are five must-haves for any rescue diver. The most basic, cheapest of snorkel is actually more useful to a rescue diver than a fancy dry valve expensive snorkel. For in-water rescue breaths, you need to get air into the victim's lungs on the surface, which isn't easy to do when you're in the water. Unless you can walk on water like Jesus of Nazareth, you're going to need to lift yourself up out of the water to get your head over the top of theirs without dunking their face under the water. That's just gonna make things worse if you do that. But one of those kind of face masks, the pocket mask things, they're great and all, but they do go nasty pretty quickly when you take them on a dive. Uh, you end up getting stuff growing inside of it, which again is the last thing that you want on a victim. But a basic J snorkel is just the ticket. Towing a diver behind you whilst removing equipment and giving rescue breaths is tough work, especially when there's only one of you. To make your life easier, take your basic snorkel, you put that in the victim's mouth and hold it with one hand. That kind of secures their airway and gives you control to move them around. Your other hand can now be unclipping gear or sort of holding onto the other end of the snorkel for you to breathe into that snorkel. It's a long tube, so it acts as a bit of a barrier and gives you space to, so that you don't have to stop and then swim up every few seconds to donate breath. You can literally do it from behind them in that towing position. Most octo hoses are about 90 centimeters long, straight out of the box. That's about the shortest you should ever go with an octo. 90 centimeters, is okay with a calm and collected diver right in front of you, but consider the hose has to run from your first stage, kind of right behind you, over your shoulder, and then across to your buddy. 90 centimeters doesn't give you much wiggle room or movement. In a real world situation, when someone's just tried to suck in a breath and got nothing, or a hose is whipping around and there's bubbles going everywhere, People aren't usually calm and serene unless they've had specific training for that. A longer hose gives you some literal breathing room to sort out problems. If you need to get around to their back to shut down a valve or something, I'd rather have a bit of extra slack in that hose so it doesn't yank the second stage out of their mouth. Remember that if your octo hose goes into the right hand side of the second stage, the way that 90% of regulators do, the hose roots over your right hand shoulder and then has to go diagonally across to your buddy's right hand shoulder to go into that second stage if you're face to face with them. So a long hose allows for that extra angle and that extra movement instead of going into the left hand side, which means the second stage is upside down. Hoses are pretty cheap. They're very easy to swap over and they're fairly universal. Just double check your second stage. Chances are, if something's gone wrong on the dive, then you're not exiting exactly where you plan to. So you need to be easy to find in the water. One or two kind of scuba divers heads just poking out of the water isn't easy to spot, especially if you're wearing hoods and masks as well. So you should bring a visual and an auditory signaling device. Surface marker boys should be taken on every single dive, at least one, if not two, on each diver. You want the largest, brightest orange marker boy that can be seen for miles, that stands up above any waves. Powerful torches as well. A lot of divers lost at sea spend a good few hours before they're finally located by search and rescue teams, so it could turn dark by the time that Coast Guard actually come looking for you, so a bright torch is worth bringing even on daytime dives. 
Whistles and horns are also useful to help you get found. We think that our vision is our primary sense, but as humans, we actually react to noise and sounds very, very well. And you don't need to be looking in the specific direction of a loud noise to notice it. A six foot long DSMB is only useful if someone's specifically looking in that direction. And divers rescued at sea have reported being just 200 meters away from a rescue boat that was specifically looking for them, but hadn't noticed them. And 200 meters away, that's not very far. A loud horn or a whistle, they can be fitted to your BCD anywhere. Horns can be fitted to your BCD hose, and that just blast loud air or a loud noise coming from the air from your tank so that search teams can zero in on your location, even if they can't see you. Just, you know, dunk your ears under the water because they are stupidly loud, but I'd rather it be too loud and people can actually hear me. One of the worst things that can happen to a scuba diver is to get caught up in something. Underwater is a weird environment where things kind of move and drift around. Fishing gear is the worst. Lost fishing gear, we call it ghost gear, is usually snagged on something secure, like a big rock or something. That's why it's been cut free by the fishermen. But fishing line is specifically made to be incredibly strong, so it won't snap, invisible, in the water so that fish don't see it, so you don't see it neither. And it often has a barbed metal hook on one end as well, just to get caught on something. Fishing netting as well is specifically designed to catch and then wrap around things. And all of this is built to last in a marine environment, so it doesn't degrade even over long periods. An essential piece of equipment for any diver is at least one knife or cutting device. A rescue diver should be diving with at least two, in case you can't reach that first one. But also, kind of a range. A line cutter is great for cutting through thinner obstacles, but they're not great for soaring through thicker obstacles. Carry a line cutter on you by all means, they're fantastic, most divers nowadays do, but also strap a serrated knife somewhere on you. Uh, if you can't reach that line cutter because your arm is caught, at least you can reach the other one. If you need something to saw, you have that second tool. If you need a bit more control, you can use some trauma shears. There's plenty of variety out there, but you should always have at least two cutting devices on you in different places just in case you can't reach the original. Mirrored masks are great. They look cool. People assume your name is Brad or Trent. They filter out certain wavelengths of light to protect your eyes. But one thing that they do that's bad for a rescue diver is cover up your eyes. Eyes are the windows to the soul, but they're also a huge part of our unspoken communication as humans. We've spent thousands of years unknowingly developing communication just with subtle changes to our faces. So when a panic diver looks at you, if they can't see your eyes, it kind of makes things worse. If they can see your eyes are calm, it can help to calm them down without even saying a single word, which we can't converse underwater, so eyes make a huge difference. The most important thing that you should bring with you as a rescue diver is that calm demeanor and a mask with just a simple glass lens. If something bad happens and you're flustered and panicking, you're just gonna be making the situation worse. Nobody really knows what they're gonna do when it hits the fan, but do your best to Take a breath, look at what you have in front of you and what is your best action. With a lot of panic situations, you can actually avoid them altogether by being, or at least appearing, calm and collected. If other divers are escalating in their heads, building up the situation, but then they turn to you and they see that your eyes are and how calm they are, it should help to calm the entire situation before it even becomes a situation. Invest them in a mask without a mirrored finish, and that should definitely help your overall dive group. So all of those are available from our website, simplyscuba.com. Have a look around the website. There's plenty of stuff to check out. Uh, also check out our merch store. There'll be a banner underneath this video to check out some of our t-shirt and hoodie designs. Thank you for watching everybody. And of course, safe diving.